Hi guys, welcome back to another video or your first video, I don't know. Welcome if you're new here, welcome either way. This is going to be my January 2022 book haul and I bought 18 books this month, so let's just get into them. I haven't organised these in any way. Um, so the first one I have is Big Mushy Happy Lump. This is a Sarah Scribbles comic and yeah, I've already read this and really enjoyed it, so this one. The next one I have is a play that I got at a local used bookshop and I hadn't heard anything about it, but I recognised the publisher. I tend to like Oberon plays and it is 2,401 objects by... I think that it's by the Analog Group, but there's a couple of people who are uh, noted and I read this in January and really really enjoyed it. I'll go more into the plot when I do my January wrap up but it's essentially a play about I think a real case of someone who when they were first trying to work out how to cure people of epilepsy had a part of their brain removed and how it affected his memory retention. So this was really good. Next I have a little tiny book which is Come Close by Sappho. So this is one of the Little Black Classics editions by Penguin and it is essentially a um, collection of some of Sappho's poetry. I've really, really enjoyed this collection. I read it as an e-copy before I actually bought the physical book. And I would say if you're looking to get into Sappho's poetry, I would highly recommend this collection because it feels very, um, as if a lot of care went into which poems got chosen for this. Next, I also have a very short book, which is No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference by Greta Thunberg. This, again, I've already read. It was one of my best books of the year last year. And it is essentially a collection of Greta's uh, speeches that she's given at Climate Talks. And this is very, very good. I highly recommend that um, anyone listening picks this up and reads it. It's so good. So that sounds more like a haul than a wrap up. Here's a book that I know nothing about. So this is Spirited by Julie Cohen. And I was drawn to this because of the cover mainly. I saw this in the works for really cheap and I was like, that looks really good. And then I read the back and I was like, could this be gay? And then I looked on Goodreads and it was indeed gay. And that is pretty much the only reason why I picked it up. Apart from the beautiful cover and the fact that the story sounds like it's going to be really good. So I'll be reading this very soon. I'm very excited. But I know nothing about the story. So I will tell you more when I've read it. The next book I have here is Book Love by Debbie Tung. This is such a beautiful collection of... Um, sort of one page comic strips all about being a book lover. I think that anyone who is a book lover will identify with with a lot of the things that I said. This is the sort of art style, very sweet. And I highly recommend this. It's also got a really nice feeling cover. I know that that's not something that sways most people to buy or not buy a book, but this cover just feels really, really lovely. And the next book I have is another one that I haven't read, and that is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo early last year, I think, and it... I know that it gets a lot of love, but I kind of just thought it was fine. Um, but I am willing to try again. I do want to see what uh, this one is about. This one unlike some of her other work is not written in verse this is a full novel and it's about a teen uh grappling with being a teen parent and her handling her dreams wanting to become a chef so i definitely want to try this out oh the person who had it before me stopped at page 33 so i'm very excited to try I'm very excited to try this out and we will see what I think. Back to another book that I have already read and that is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. 
Um, I'm not sure what I think about this cover. It's a bit bizarre. But um, this book is very, very weird. And it's something that shouldn't really have worked for me, given my uh, previous sort of things I tend to like and not like in books, but this was amazing. It's a very metaphorical story about a woman who ends up in a manipulative, abusive relationship. So tread with caution if that's something you might be triggered by, but this was very, very good. The next book just has a stunning cover, and that is Drowned City by Emily Tesh. Just look at the detail on that cover. It's so beautiful. So this is the second and final book in the Silver in the Wood duology. Um, I have already read this one as well and really, really loved it. So I can't wait to have them together on my shelves. And this next book I haven't read, but I basically gave into the hype. I got Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. Um, retellings of ancient Greek uh, stories and figures, but from a more female grounded perspective is pretty much everywhere at the moment. There's quite a few of them making the rounds and I already know the uh, of the legend of Ariadne and the labyrinth and how she got wronged by, um, who's that guy, Jason? No, Theseus. Um, why was Jason in my head? Anyway, I know that story, so I do wonder whether or not this will change the original ending or just be a retelling, I don't know, but this cover was stunning. I saw it for a markdown price in Sainsbury's and I decided to pick it up, so I will see how this is. The next book I have is Winter Keep by Kristen Cashore. Now, I thought I had bought the whole series of this, the first book being Graceling. And when I went to the works, seeing that they had redone all the covers in these beautiful, stunning editions, I picked all three up thinking it's a trilogy. So um, I've got all three of them now, not realizing that a fourth book has now come out in the series and they also had that. So I've now picked up this, sorry that it's reflecting my in my ring light, let me hold it like that. So again, I haven't started this series, but I really like Kristen Cashore's writing. I really, really enjoy Jane Unlimited by her. And I wanted to have these beautiful new covers and they were really cheap in the work. So if they still have them, definitely pick them up because these are beautiful. Quite a long one now is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin hmm. Moore. Mew. I'm gonna to have to find out how to pronounce this. That's the first time I've seen Tamsin um, uh, spelt like that. Very interesting. This is quite a long book. How many pages are you? Oh, there's a prologue of the next book in it. So, oh, 444. So this much of the book is sort of glossary and another chapter of the next book. I love this stunning cover I just think the art is so dark I love the sort of skeletons and it's one of these I want to say animated that's not the word it's um it, it's an illustrated cover but you could not mistake this for any other book this book looks so unique I really really love illustrated covers but I think a lot of them have been getting far too similar but I love this cover I love the dark um, nature of the plot. It's about necromancy and I really can't wait to get into this one. Again, I'm blinding you with the ring light, sorry. And back again to books that I have read already. I have The Monster of Ellen Haven. This is a very short little novella, which was one of my favourite books of last year. I really, really love the tone of this. It's really dark and haunting. You, it, I loved the atmosphere, the characters were fascinating and deeply fucked up but very very fascinating and again I don't know how many people sort of like the feel of covers but this is, I've never felt this texture before on a cover. It feels very like rough but in a nice way. I don't know. It feels like really really nice paper. I don't know if that's just me though. <laughs> And we have another Sarah Scribbles comic collection, and that is Adulthood is a Myth. These books are just so relatable. They're just one page comic strips and just about life 
and I've followed Sarah Scribbles online for a while and I like to pick up her bind ups um, whenever they come out be because I really want to support her work I really like it so I would highly recommend this maybe try out some of her work online because it's available for free most of it and yeah highly recommend and the next two I have is two heart and brain uh, comics this one is adult responsibilities utter nonsense and this one is gut instincts these are both very very funny it's essentially a comic strip where the characters are your organs and it's just very relatable each of them is in full color and it's just very relatable to sort of just life in general and I would highly recommend these as well and the last two that I have are two poetry collections I don't read poetry very often but this first one I just decided to give it a go and I found incredibly accessible and that is The Princess Decides to Save Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. Now I really enjoyed this collection, I hadn't got into poetry because I thought it's not my thing, I don't want to have to read things that I then have to have that explained to me by someone else um, and that's what I really loved about this, it was really relatable concepts but stripped away to a sort of very powerful form it sort of didn't have any su other superfluous reg no it didn't have any other superfluous sort of fluff around it it was just really impactful for me i think the most common criticism that i see of this author and this series of poetry collections is the fact that it's i hear it from a lot of sort of uh, literary snobs that like oh well poetry isn't poetry if you just write a sentence and then hit spacebar every few, few words which I don't really think this was but I think the poetry that people like that would really like I don't think I'd understand and that's fine I found this really accessible and really meaningful and I really enjoyed it and the last book that I have for you and one that is also a poetry collection is Sappho 100 Lyrics collected by Bliss Carmen this is so grossy because of me handling it when I read it but this is just like it says on the tin it's um, the ancient Greek poet Sappho it's 100 of her poems and lyrics and this I enjoyed not so much as the come close one mainly because because of so much because so much of Sappho's poetry has been lost over time, um, especially with the fire of Alexandria, a lot of a lot of copies of her poems were stored there. A lot of her poems are we only have a bit of it left, so because we don't really have the full poem, a lot of the poems felt unfinished and sort of truncated. But I really enjoyed this. Still, I really really like. Sappho's style of poetry. I find it very overdramatic and full full of a lot of emotion. It's also very gay, which is another reason why I liked it. But yes, I I don't know how many more of Sappho's poet poetry there is to sort of find at this point, but I will continue to pick up collections as I see them. And also seeing different translations of them is also very interesting because some of these are also found in the other one but just slightly differently translated so this I really enjoyed and there you have it those were the 18 books that I got this month that turned into a little bit of a wrap-up so I will try and be more concise in my actual wrap-up but thank you so much for sticking with me to the end of the video I would love to hear about a book that you've bought recently and sort of what did you think of it did you just pick it up on a whim or did you pick up a book that you've read and loved I'd love to know so please tell me down in the comments below and I will see you in my next video bye